have a little secret. Houston, we have a problem. We're not in Kansas anymore. Who are you going to call? Ghostbusters! Let's talk about it. Hi, I'm Vanessa from SpeakEnglishWithVanessa.com and you probably understood the words I just said, but did you understand what they mean? If I said that to you in real conversation, would you say, huh, why did you call me Houston and we don't live in Kansas and I don't believe in ghosts? What are you talking about? Today, I want to bring you in to a little secret of American English conversation. What's that secret? Come a little closer. Psst. The secret is that Americans often use pop culture references in daily conversation. What's a pop culture reference? Well, this means that it's a famous quote from a movie, TV show, or famous person. Even if you haven't seen the movie or TV show like me, you can still use the famous quote. In fact, some of the movies that I'm about to tell you about, I've never seen, but I still use the quotes and I know what they are. It's just like being in the US has infused these into my brain as a normal part of conversation. So today's lesson is like a little shortcut into American conversations. I'd like to share the top 20 pop culture references in American English. If you wanna sound cool with these quotes in your conversations, you can download the free PDF worksheet that goes with today's lesson. You will get all of the quotes, the movie references, the ways to use them, some sample sentences so that you can integrate them and also understand them when other people use them. And at the bottom of the worksheet, you can answer Vanessa's challenge question so that you can answer this and use what you have learned. All right, let's get started with the first pop culture reference, secret of American conversations. For each of these quotes, I'm going to show you how it's used in daily conversation first, because this is how you will encounter it. And I want you to guess if you can understand what it means, and then we'll talk about where it came from. Well, one day I walked into my house and my mom was baking some chocolate chip cookies and I said, oh, there's no place like home. Hmm. You probably understand that I feel very comfortable and love to be at home because there's cookies and my mom is baking them. But this reference, there's no place like home, comes from the movie The Wizard of Oz. In this movie, Dorothy gets whisked away to another land, Oz, and when she wants to go home, she needs to say this classic phrase. She taps her feet or her heels together and says, there's no place like home. There's no place like home. And you know what? Sometimes that's true. You can travel all around the world, have a great time. And then when you get home, you feel like, ah, oh, there's no place like home. It's really the best. Number two, when we moved from the quiet countryside to the big city, I told my husband, we're not in Kansas anymore. I've never lived in Kansas. In fact, I've never even been to Kansas, but I can still use this phrase. Kansas is a state in the US, if you don't know. Hmm, this also comes from The Wizard of Oz. In this movie, Dorothy says to her little dog when they're in the foreign, unusual land of Oz, she says, Toto, which is her dog, I've a feeling we're not in Kansas anymore. Her home was in Kansas, and now she's in a strange new place. So we often use this phrase, huh, I'm not in Kansas anymore, to talk about a completely new environment where you feel a bit uncomfortable and maybe you're gonna have to get used to it. Uh, we're not in Kansas anymore. Pop culture reference number three, the secret to American English conversations. One time, my husband was cheering for me as I ran a competition race and he said, run, Forrest, run! Is my name Forrest? Was I in a forest? No, this is from the famous movie, Forrest Gump. The main character, Forrest, has some physical difficulties with his legs and he can't walk well, he definitely can't run, and then some bullies are going to try to beat him up. What can he do? He has to get away. So his friend, Jenny, yells to him in the famous scene, run, Forrest, run! And he's running away from the bullies. And this is the first time in his life when his leg braces fall off and he runs fast as lightning. And it's kind of this really emotional scene. 
and the line run forest run has often stuck with a lot of people so if you're running or your friend is running well or even if you just see somebody running after their kid run forest run is a very funny thing to say <laughs> number four before leaving to go to the grocery store my mom would always say in her best terminator voice i'll be back <laughs> have you ever watched the terminator i have a little secret i haven't but i use this quote all the time i don't know why maybe it's just part of it's in the air. We have to use these quotes. <laughs> so in the movie, The Terminator, the actor Arnold Schwarzenegger is like a cyborg and he's trying to get some people and destroy them and they're protected by the police. So he tells them in a scary, dark way, I'll be back. But if you have watched any movies with Arnold Schwarzenegger, he has a very strong accent, very classic accent. And in fact, this is an example of a time when a foreign accent, a non-native accent, is to his advantage. If Arnold Schwarzenegger didn't have his unique accent, he probably wouldn't be as cool or wouldn't be as unique. So his accent makes him who he is. So I challenge you to kind of have a similar mindset. If you feel like you need to completely get rid of your foreign accents, your accent that comes from your lovely native language, just remember Arnold Schwarzenegger, you too can be the Terminator and say, I'll be back. I'm going to get you people who I'm trying to destroy. I'll be back. <laughs> Number five, when my husband was mowing our grass and the grass was extremely tall, he said, hasta la vista, baby. <laughs> this is a Spanish phrase. Hasta la vista means see you later. But when we add baby to it, we know that we are using a quote again from the Terminator. This is a quote that uh, a child has taught Arnold Schwarzenegger, who's a cyborg, to be more human. If he uses this phrase, he'll sound more human. So it's usually used in kind of a silly or dramatic way. So when my husband is cutting the lawn, the grass is long and he's saying, see you later grass, you're gonna get cut. Ha <laughs> ha, I'm gonna win. Hasta la vista, baby. <laughs> you can also say this as a silly way to say goodbye. My husband was saying goodbye to the grass, but you could also say goodbye to your friends in a very silly tone. Hasta la vista, baby. <laughs> and it's just like the quote from the movie, The Terminator. Number six, when I opened the fridge, the entire container of eggs fell on the ground. And I said, oh no. My husband said, who are you gonna call? Ghostbusters. <laughs> Why is he talking about ghosts when I drop the eggs on the floor? Well, I have a problem. First of all, I have no more eggs. <laughs> Second of all, I have to clean them up. So my husband is presenting a solution to the problem. Somebody can come and save me. Ghostbusters. <laughs> if you have not seen the movie Ghostbusters, it's about a New York mm, group who is saving people from ghosts. They go into places and rid them of ghosts. And the famous line now is, who are you gonna call? And someone else maybe across the room might yell, Ghostbusters! Or you can say it all together like my husband did when I dropped the eggs. I obviously needed some serious help here, so I needed a team of expert Ghostbusters to help me clean up my eggs. Who are you gonna call? Ghostbusters, of course. <laughs> Number seven. My youngest son loves to eat bananas, but when he eats them, he eats them like this. He eats the whole thing so fast. <laughs> so I sometimes say to him, hey, what's up doc? <laughs> is he a doctor? Do I want him to become a doctor? No, <laughs> instead this is a reference to the famous cartoon Bugs Bunny. In Bugs Bunny, the character Bugs Bunny is chased by Elmer Fudd. Elmer Fudd is always trying to catch and shoot Bugs Bunny. But usually Bugs Bunny is very clever and he kind of makes fun of Elmer Fudd. So he has a carrot and he usually gnaws the carrot completely. And then he says, hey, what's up doc? <laughs> He's making fun of Elmer Fudd by calling him doc or doctor. And maybe Elmer Fudd is looking for Bugs Bunny over here. And he's just casually standing over here, eating a carrot, saying, eh, why haven't you looked at me over here? What are you doing over there? <laughs> so usually we use this phrase when someone has eaten something quickly, um, especially a carrot, but some kind of food that they're eating quickly. And you just want to kind of be silly and say, eh, what's up, doc? <laughs> 
Number eight, when I was promoted to CEO of the company, this is just a dream. <laughs> when I was promoted to CEO of the company, my father told me, with great power comes great responsibility. Hmm. This quote has come through history from various translations, but in modern times, it's most famous from the Spider-Man movie, where somebody tells Peter Parker, with great power comes great responsibility. And you know what? It's pretty true. When you have a lot of power, you have a lot of responsibility to do something good with that. Hopefully, you'll choose something good. Number nine. When I discovered that I left my car windows down during a rainstorm, I said, oh, Houston, we have a problem. <laughs> Is my friend named Houston? No, this comes from an actual historical event, but a lot of people know it through a movie that is depicting the historical event. And that movie is called Apollo 13. And it's about the 1970 Apollo 13 NASA space launch. And during that space re-entry, there was a malfunction in the system and the astronauts said the famous line, to the people on the ground, to NASA, who was located in the Texas city of Houston, they said, Houston, we have a problem. And this is a very famous, very tragic line, actually, uh, because they had such a problem with their, uh, I won't spoil it for you. I guess I spoiled a lot of movies in this, <laughs> this video so far. But they say, Houston, we have a problem. So in their situation, it was very serious. But in daily conversation, we often use it for lighter things, like my windows are down. Oh, my car is so wet. Houston, we have a problem. Number 10, okay, don't watch any further if you have never seen Star Wars. Please turn this off. I do not want to give you the biggest spoiler for Star Wars. <laughs> but uh, my brother-in-law, he had a dream. This was his, his vision in life. When his son was born, he wanted to pretend like he wasn't the father for his son's first couple years so that one day he could come to his son and say, I am your father. <laughs> and his son would say, what? <laughs> it was of course just a joke because his son knows that <laughs> he's the father. <laughs> but this line, I am your father, is one of the most famous movie quotes of all time. And we use this in a very fun, joking way in daily conversation. If someone says, I'm not gonna listen to you. Why'd you tell me to do that? He might say, oh, well, I am your father. You have to listen to me. Even if you're not the father, you can still say that. And in the Star Wars movie, somebody, well, I guess I've already spoiled a lot, <laughs> says, Luke, I am your father. Oh, and it's such a, a pivotal moment in cinematic history. So you can use this wonderful quote. Number 11, when my friend was going off to her important interview, I told her, May the force be with you. <laughs> uh, a good re uh, return to that is, and also with you. <laughs> May the force be with you. What does this mean? It means good luck. <laughs> From the movie Star Wars, this is often what characters, Jedis, would say to each other to wish them good luck. You can do it. Use the force. This is the power in that, that world, in that universe. May the force be with you. I hope that you have great power to be able to do the important things that you're going to do. So if your friend is going off to have an interview, you can say, may the force be with you. It's a very silly and lighthearted thing to say, but it can help them in that moment of stress to think, ah, all right, that was a fun quote. I got this. Number 12, if I don't call my mom for a couple days, she'll send me a text message that says, ET, phone home. Am I ET? What is ET? <laughs> ET stands for extraterrestrial, which is an alien, someone who lives in outer space. The famous movie ET is about an alien or an extraterrestrial that comes to Earth and he's trying to get back to his home planet. And he often says, ET phone home. So if you use this in spoken conversation, it's good or you will hear other people use the voice of the character. It's kind of crackly, it's kind of old, ET phone home. And they'll use their finger like this because it looks like the character. <laughs> so you can use this line, ET phone home, when someone asks, hey, what are you doing? Instead of saying, I'm calling my mom, you could say, ET phone home. <laughs> Very silly thing to say. 
Number 13, when my sister was getting dressed up and getting ready to go to prom, this is a special dance that happens in the US, she looked in the mirror and said, mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest one of all? <laughs> This uh, famous line is actually quite different from the original quote in the movie Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, but it has the same meaning. In the movie, she says, magic mirror on the wall, who's the fairest one of all? But for some reason in daily conversation, we usually say mirror, mirror on the wall. And if you are looking into the mirror and you want to be a little bit silly and you think, Oh, I look so great today. Or you're looking at someone else and you want to say that mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the fairest one of all? Who is the most beautiful one of all? Well, you can use this quote because in the movie, the, the queen, the evil queen looks into the mirror, a magic mirror, and she hopes that the mirror will say she is the most beautiful one, but it doesn't always say that. <laughs> so we can use this just as a silly way to say, oh, I hope I look all right today. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the fairest one of all? <laughs> Number 14, when I have a bad day and I just need to make a little progress to feel good about myself, I just say, just keep swimming, just keep swimming, just keep swimming. Am I really swimming in the water? Am I a professional swimmer? No. <laughs> Instead, this quote comes from the famous movie, Finding Nemo. Maybe you've seen it. There is a character, Dory, who is the blue fish, and she's not super smart, but she says one line that is very important throughout the whole movie, just keep swimming. When Nemo's dad is trying to search for him and he has so many troubles, Dory's encouragement, her advice is just keep swimming. I know it's tough, but you will reach your final destination. Just keep swimming. So maybe for you, if you're having a tough day, or you feel like I'm just not improving in English the way that I want to, think about this line. Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. You can do it. Number 15. When I was a kid and my dad was reading the newspaper and I came in and said, Hey, do you know where the remote is? Oh, do you know where my book is? Hey, what are you doing? And my dad didn't respond for a minute and I said it again and then I said it again. He would look up from his newspaper and say, you talking to me? <laughs> That's not the way that my dad usually speaks. So what was he saying? Well, this is a quote from the movie Taxi Driver. Something interesting is I've never seen this movie, but for some reason I use this quote. Maybe it's because my dad used it, I've heard other people use it, but it is a silly and lighthearted way to say, I know that you are probably asking me those questions, but you're kind of being annoying. <laughs> maybe you should be a little more polite. You're talking to me? Or maybe you're not even sure if someone is talking to you. There's a lot of people and they just keep saying, hey, where's, where's the beer? Hey, where's the beer? Hey, where's the beer? And you're talking to someone else and then you turn to them and say, you talking to me? <laughs> you can use that quote to say, oh, I didn't realize that you were addressing me. <laughs> but instead you can use that funny quote, you talking to me? And it's based off of a New Yorker. So we often use kind of a New York accent. You talking to me? <laughs> I don't really know how to do a New York accent, but we use that type of voice to imitate the character. So even if you've never seen the movie, like me, you can still use this quote. Number 16, when I was walking down the sidewalk, a bird flew right in front of me and I had to step back for a moment and I said, I'm walking here. <laughs> Obviously I am walking on the sidewalk, but what does this quote, I'm walking here mean? <laughs> this is another New York accent quote. It's from the movie Midnight Cowboy that I haven't seen, but another instance where I still use this quote, I don't know why. <laughs> it's just part of American culture, I guess. So in the movie, uh, the main character's walking down the street and a taxi driver cuts in front of him and he slams the hood of the car and he uses this famous quote and says, I'm walking here, I'm walking here. What are you doing? Get out of my way. <laughs> so we're, we use it in that same type of New York accent. It's kind of like you're, you're upset, but it's kind of fake upset. You're not really upset. You're just trying to be a little bit humorous perhaps. I'm walking here, what are you doing bird? Get out of my way. <laughs> Number 17, when I was cleaning the attic, there's so much junk, I just didn't wanna be there. And I said, beam me up Scotty. <laughs> Who is Scotty? Who am I talking to? 
Well, this comes from the Star Trek TV series, just quite famous. The, the way that they would go from the planet to the spaceship was a type of fantasy technology. They would beam them up. So it would kind of take particles of the person and it would take them up into the spaceship. So the famous line, beam me up, Scotty, is please take me away from this place. I want to go back to the spaceship. Please take me away from this messy attic. <laughs> I want to get to another place anywhere. <laughs> but we can also use this if you are ready to be picked up. Maybe your mom is driving to your friend's house to pick you up. You're at your friend's house and your mom's picking you up. You can send her a text and say, beam me up, Scotty. <laughs> it's a silly way to say this. It means I'm ready, come pick me up, please. I'm here, I'm ready for you to take me to another place. Beam me up, Scotty. <laughs> Number 18, when I got my college diploma, I yelled, freedom! <laughs> I'm sure many people throughout history have said freedom, but this quote became much more popular in pop culture recently with the movie Braveheart. He doesn't say just freedom. He has a little bit of a longer quote. He says, they may take our lives, but they'll never take our freedom. <laughs> Very inspiring quote. So maybe for you, the next time that you are allowed to go eat at a restaurant, you can shout, freedom, finally I can live a normal life again. Nobody is stopping me from doing things that a free person would be able to do. Freedom. Number 19, my biology teacher used to say before every test, let's get ready to rumble. <laughs> Have you ever had a teacher who was kind of overly excited about tests or exams or they wanted the students to feel really excited about it? It's kind of annoying, but it's also kind of funny. <laughs> well, this quote is from a guy called Michael Buffer, who's a professional wrestling announcer. So before wrestling matches, he would say, let's get ready to rumble. And I've never really watched wrestling, but I use this in daily conversation, maybe before a big task before a big test, before a big challenge, and you're trying to like encourage yourself or pump yourself up. All right, we got this. All right, let's get ready to rumble. We can do it <laughs> as a form of encouragement. And finally, number 20, our 20th pop culture reference, which is like a secret to American English conversation. Let me give you an example. When my husband picked up his socks and put them in the laundry basket, finally, <laughs> I said, <gasps> That's one small step for man and one giant leap for mankind. <laughs> what do you think this quote is from? It's not from a movie. It's not from a TV show. It is from a famous American astronaut, Neil Armstrong, the first person to walk on the moon. He said when he stepped on the moon, that's one small step for man because he just had a small step. It was nothing huge, but he said also one giant leap, which is like a big jump for mankind, for humanity. So the idea that we have enough technology to go to the moon, we have enough know-how to be able to do this, enough resources, that's a big deal. That's a giant leap for humanity. So it's a very uh, clever quote, and you can use this in your daily life if there is a simple thing putting your dirty socks in the laundry basket and it feels like a big deal to you. It's just a little thing, but it feels like a big deal. You can use this quote. Congratulations, you are now on the inside because you know the secrets to American English conversations. I hope that you'll be able to use these famous quotes. Don't forget to download the free PDF worksheet to go with this lesson. All of the quotes, the meanings, the movies, the sample sentences, and you can answer Vanessa's challenge question at the bottom of the PDF to help you use what you have learned. Never forget it and master conversation so that you can speak confidently. Forget fear. Well, thank you so much for learning English with me today. And I'll see you again next Friday for a new lesson here on my YouTube channel. May the force be with you. Bye. The next step is to download the free PDF worksheet for this lesson. With this free PDF, you will master today's lesson and never forget what you have learned. You can be a confident English speaker. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel for a free English lesson every Friday.
Bye.